fast-paced man's demise makes this new countryman the priciest mini, performance specials aside, with its range cherrying purpose backed by a serious expansion in size. The first countryman was big when compared with the Bijou mini hardtop of the day, but it was overly compact even by compact crossover standards. Owners and potential buyers told Mini's customer clinicians they wanted it to be bigger and more practical. Which seems like a strange thing to hear from people in the market for a car named Mini, but it also explains why the new 2017 Countryman has grown by a significant 8.5 inches in length and 2.9 inches in wheelbase. Yet the expansion isn't immediately obvious when you look at it, the proportions being almost identical to the old cars. With the exception of the added length of the rearmost side window, this second-generation Countryman looks as if it were styled with a photocopier's scale conversion. The new Countryman retains the plastic wheel arch cladding that automotive designers use as visual shorthand for mall-grade SUVs. Its modest ground clearance precludes anything but the most gentle off-road use. Under the surface, though, much changes. This Countryman follows the rest of the Mini clan by switching to BMW's new front-wheel drive architecture, specifically the UKL2 platform that also underpins the BMW X1, which is this Mini's more straight-laced cousin. The engine lineup won't burden US buyers since only two, both shared with other Minis, will be available initially. The entry-level Cooper employs a turbocharged 1.5-liter three-cylinder producing 134 horsepower, while the Cooper S brings a 189 horsepower turbocharged 2.0-liter 4, which is basically the smaller engine with another cylinder. Europe gets diesel options including a three-cylinder, but there are no plans to bring these to America. The cabin is more spacious and less gloomy than its predecessors, with better fit and finish and genuine evidence of ergonomic planning, which is new for Mini. As in the current hardop, there are still some hard-to-see low-mounted toggle switches, apparently reefing on the original 1959 BMC Mini, and a fair bit of different for the sake of being different design. The rounded navigation screen, trimmed to fit in the circular central binnacle, is a styling cue that we suspect a middle-aged designer thought would appeal to millennials. Practical considerations get their due, though, with generous space both front and rear. The driving position is raised, as you'd expect for a crossover, it's not quite SUV commanding, but is certainly assertive. There's also adult viable room in the back with wear hat headspace, and a respectable 18 cubic feet of luggage volume beneath the hatch with the seats in place, and 48 cubes with them stowed. It drives as you'd expect, like a big, fat mini with extra right height. Yet it also moves with considerably more dynamic polish than its predecessor. The first Countryman rode rough roads, as if it were being frog marched down a pier in concrete boots, but this one copes far better with undulating surfaces, even on the Cooper S's standard 18-inch aluminum wheels. It's still firm, but there's a newfound compliance that helps it ride out moderate bumps without being thrown off course. BMW's chassis engineers never seem to tire of go-kart handling in the How to Tune a Mini playbook. The new Countryman's right now steering response doesn't really suit the rest of its crossover character. Like a hot hatch, it dives for apexes with the slightest of steering inputs. But beyond this initial enthusiasm, there's little of the involvement or adjustability that the smaller minis manage, the driven rear axle still unable to supply much help as the front end runs wide on tight or greasy corners. It handles faster turns with more aplomb, feeling impressively stable and planted. But it's also loud at cruising velocity, allowing a surprising amount of road roar and wind noise into the cabin.